What's up boys and gals and welcome back to another Black Desert Online video. In today's video I wanted to do something a little bit different from what I've done before. Normally I release quite concise and scripted videos which last around 10 minutes. But instead of doing that, I wanted to kind of give you more of an in-depth overview of what I've been doing since I've returned to the game. More specifically, I've been doing cooking and gathering. So over the last day or so, I've gathered a load of clips of what I was doing. And I'm just going to let them play through. And whilst we're going through that, I'm going to kind of explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how it's going to help me get set up and running in the game again. So to get started, one of the first things I did when I woke up yesterday morning was is I went over to a wonderful place, which I'm sure lots of you know and fondly remember, called Pilgrim's Haven. Now, if any of you don't know what this is, it's a location in the desert. Uh, it's very close uh, to the beginning of the desert, so you don't have to travel in very far to get to it. But the reason that people go there is because you can gather a hell of a lot of rough stone there fairly quickly. Now, basically what I did is I picked up a couple magic pickaxes that I had laying around in my inventory, but you can just get pickaxes off the marketplace or you can craft the Logia pickaxe if you've just come back and you want to kind of upgrade that. Uh, but I just went with my magic pickaxes and I went there to burn my energy. Uh, the reason that I wanted to do this is because I'm looking to get into cooking quite seriously. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, uh, when you are doing cooking, you go for a hell of a lot of cooking utensils. And the main bottleneck for those is the rough stone and unfortunately the logs as well, which I've just ended up buying off of the auction house because I cannot be bothered to go and chop down trees as well as mining rough stone. So I came here, I burnt my 280 odd energy and once I was done with that, I headed back uh, to put it into Glish where I then started making cooking utensils. If you're not familiar with why I would take the materials to Glish, it's because in Glish there's a tool workshop that you can upgrade to level 3, which means that you can make yourself the advanced cooking utensils, which are the ones that you definitely want to get. Don't worry about the other ones at the moment. And all you need to do is get the materials for that, pop it in the storage keeper, and then just set a worker to start crafting them from the tool workshop. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes per cooking utensil to be crafted. I think I started crafting them yesterday, and with the materials that I had in there, I made about 30 to 40 of them. The materials you need are rough stone, black stone powder, usable scantling, and I believe melted iron ore. Not 100% on that though, but you'll have to check that. I'm pretty sure that is right. So once I had enough cooking utensils, I basically went and placed them in my house. Uh, you're going to see in a bit that when I go through my house, I have a lot of alchemy tool stations. And that's because initially when I used to play this game, I thought I was going to get set up with alchemy and push that really hard. But since coming back to the game, I've been told numerous times that cooking is just far superior to alchemy. I'm not 100% sure on the reasoning why, but yeah, unfortunately cooking is king at the moment. So I've decided to put alchemy on the back burner for now and focus on cooking. Uh, whilst you can just see the video of me running back, I just wanted to quickly go over Logia gear because I don't think I've gone over it in much detail and it was a little bit confusing for me when I came back. So Logia gear is basically a way to increase your mastery on life skills. And by getting more mastery on life skills, you can get extra drops, you can get more things when you're gathering, you have a chance for extra procs when you're cooking. So mastery is just overall a really good thing to have in this game. So it's really advisable that you get yourself some Logia gear crafted um, as soon as you can. There's also the Manos, which is a lot better, but way more expensive. That's basically the boss gear version of it. So to get Logia gear, you can just go to Logia farm in, uh, well, near Velia, and you can just start enhancing it. It doesn't require fail stacks on anything except for the tools otherwise you just smash in some black gems and concentrated black gems and then you're basically good to go and now you can see what I started doing after I had sorted out my cooking utensils was I decided that because I'm going to be making balanos meals one of the common bottlenecks is the peppers and the onions so i decided to invest in four farms to start with because i didn't want to over my overwhelm myself with 10 farms and get bored of it after two days so i picked up four strong fences from Hydel, and then i go and place them down in velia now a couple of people have said that growing peppers in velia isn't advisable because apparently they need a hot climate however 
I'm quite lazy, so Veli is very convenient for me. I'm still getting okay yields from it, so at the moment, I'm not too fussed on my placement. However, I may try out moving it to Alton Overall, just moving a couple farms there to trial it and see if it makes a massive difference. But some people were saying that it makes up to 50% difference moving the farm, so obviously that would be quite a beneficial gain to have. Um, something else that I've been doing as well in the game is I've basically just been looking... Uh, all the materials that I am going to need. So I'm going to need dried fish to make part of the Balanos meal. I'm going to need a lot of wolf meat to make the meals. So I've been looking around at where can I get these ingredients that I need. So for the fishing, there are some nodes. There's a couple by Etheria where you can get dried fish. And there's also some outside Velia where you can get dried fish. So I've basically just been putting everything together, getting ready. Because the plan is going to be that I'm going to get all these ingredients together. I'm going to cook all the baseline stuff. And then when I'm ready to start blasting through a load of Balanos meals, I'm going to pop a load of XP bar so that I can level up cooking to guru as fast as possible. I think at the time of making this video, I'm at about master nine uh, cooking. So I've got a while to go until I'm guru. So I'm going to be using the, the life book that you can get off of the um, marketplace or off of the pearl shop. I've also got one of those old moon books as a returning player. So that gives a massive amount of XP boost. Uh, also, when you're cooking... Uh, make sure that you're using the, uh, I believe they're called Veneer Draft Elixirs. They give you extra life XP. You can get Villa XP. Uh, obviously, putting on your cooking outfit gives you XP. There's a whole load of extra XP buffs that you can get. So, basically, just make sure you look into that before you go and do a massive amount of bulk cooking. And then realize you've not had any XP buffs on at all. Because I kind of did that a little bit when I came back. And uh, my viewers were very quickly pointing out that I'm wasting a hell of a lot of XP by not being properly buffed up. So it's definitely worth looking into and doing. Uh, you can also see here that uh, to get the peppers and the onions and the hot peppers, there is very conveniently a seed vendor in Calfian. So you can just go and buy them all from there. A lot of people, what they seem to do is they just have an alt here, they buy a load of them and then they transport all the seeds over so that they can just have a you know permanent rotation of seeds coming to them. I, however, want to go for a tier 9 horse on the side. So what I've been doing, instead of just harvesting all the seeds, I've also been gathering the byproducts from breeding the plants on the farms. It's not the best way to get materials by any means, but it means I can kind of do two things at once and it helps break it up. And I, I guess it's nice to work towards a tier 9, even if it is quite slow. So... Now you'll see what I do is once I've grabbed the seeds, I uh, place them across the farms. I haven't really figured out of what level of split I need the seeds to be. So I don't know how many hot peppers I need and how many onions I need. So I'm just going to wing it, place a load down and figure out over the next few days, well, what material am I getting loads more of and how many do I actually need? It's probably advisable or I probably should have sat down and done the math first and figured out how much I needed of each seed. But I'm trying not to think too much about that stuff at the moment as it will make it too min maxi for me. So I'm just trying to have a bit of fun and, you know, start my stuff back up. Uh, one thing I will say is that I am actually farming on one of my alts, which is my warriors. Uh, he is professional five, I think, at farming at the moment. And what I'm trying to do is get him to artisan farming as quick as possible, because then you can get magical seeds, which are, as far as I'm hearing, they're amazing for farming because uh, it basically condenses all your seeds into one seed or something along those lines. Uh, so I'm not getting my workers to prune my plants on the farms because pruning is basically free xp for farming so every like half an hour or so i'm swapping back to my warrior in order to prune all the plants to just give myself some free xp again make sure you've got xp buffs on if you've got a villa scroll just pop it on your alt when you're logging on to it uh if you've can get some plus one or plus two farming clothes. Fantastic. Do that as well. There's just lots of things that can make it a little bit faster for you. Uh, another tip that I did get, which I decided not to go through with, is apparently if you place a farm down in Glish, 
uh, because of the weather environment there and it's got very high moisture, uh, the plants need pruning or they need caring for a lot. So you can basically just spam that out until you're artisan. Uh, I didn't know this at the time of placing in Velia, and after I heard about it, I didn't really want to try moving it over to the Glish area, so I've avoided that one, but I'm nearly there. I've been doing it for a day now, I think, the farms, and I've already gained, like, three levels on my warrior, so I can't really complain too much about how it's gone. So, once I was done with setting up my farms and mining for my cooking utensils and all that stuff, I thought I'd get back to basically doing some more cooking. And I really am just mass cooking grilled bird meat at the moment. Uh, the reason that I'm doing this is it's very easy and very convenient to cook. It's just two bird meat, six deep frying oil, a salt, and two cooking wine. So I've got loads of bird meat left over because I was one of those people that would just have all of these nodes set up across uh, BDO and I would have no idea what materials I was gathering or why I was gathering them. I just kind of let them go and I'd, I'd feed my workers every day before I went to bed and then again when I woke up. So over the months or even years in some cases for some of the nodes, I have a lot of random materials. So I figured this would be good to get through. Uh, because it gives XP for cooking, but on top of that, it gives me so much bird meat that I'm not going to have to worry about buying beer or bird meat for my workers for a really, really long time. Like, I've gone through a few cooking utensils, and I think I've already got like 30 or 40k bird meat. It's ridiculous. The one thing that I will say that really annoys me, and I don't know if you can turn this off, so if anyone knows, please comment below is the pop-up you get for the crafting has succeeded. You can see it coming up now. It's saying, ah, well done, you made a grilled bird meat. Or, ah, well done, you made the steam grilled bird meat, which is the blue proc version of it. Uh, I don't know if you can get rid of that. It's really annoying, but, you know, we'll see if you can get rid of it. Uh, one thing I will also say that I really like what they've added to the game is that you can now get mass cooking procs. So you use, like, ten times the materials... Uh, just by RNG and it, it makes that in one cook instead of 10 separate cooks. It's really nice because it makes you pump through your cooking uh, even quicker and kind of that's that's one of the mastery perks. So that's one of the reasons why you want higher mastery and higher cooking levels, I guess. And the other thing that I really like what they've done is they've got rid of all the random byproducts that you used to get from cooking. You used to get all those weird little dishes where some of them would give you silver, some of them would give you milk, or they'd give you contribution XP. Now nah, that's gone now. Basically, you get this thing called a witch's delicacy, I believe. And with that, you can choose what you do with it. So once you've stacked a load up, you just go to Olvia, uh, you talk to a lady, you go to trade her, and you can pick what you want to exchange them for. So what I've been doing is uh, stacking up those witches' delicacies. I've handed them in a couple times now. Uh, I did another load since this footage as well. And I'm doing it for contribution points. Because as you can see, my energy and my contribution are woefully low for the amount of time I've been playing the game. So one of my first goals with the cooking is to get myself up to around 350 contribution. Once I've done that... You can then use the delic delicacies for milk, uh, which again is amazing that you can now get a large bulk of milk from just cooking byproducts. Because back in the past, I remember when I was cooking, uh, milk was a massive bottleneck for you. Like an absolutely huge one. You, you were very limited on how much you could cook a day unless you had some form of alt system for milking uh, the cows or if you had farms or if you had loads of the byproducts from cooking already and that bottlenecks aren't fun in games it's not fun to not be able to do something you want to do because the game simply can't produce the materials quick enough now i understand there are lots of other things that you can cook in the game but they're not you know not everything is equal uh, balanos mills are far superior than cooking essence of liqueur for the rest of my life i understand that that's a low tier cooking ingredient but you know you get my point balanos meals are good i want to make balanos meals and now i'm not going to be uh, choked out by not having the milk for the cheese and all that stuff so it's just i really like what they've done to life skills uh, it feels like black desert or the, the developers took a large focus on life skills with this big overhaul they've done i think they finally addressed a lot of the issues 
that life skilling had in the game. It was always grinding was number one and life skilling was number two, unless you were very good at life skilling and really knew how to play the market and supply and demand or did mass crate trading and all that stuff. But now you really can, it seems, just life skill purely for money. So if you don't like grinding like me, then this is a very welcome change. Once I've got myself sorted with cooking and everything, I'm, I'm planning to look into the other life skills to see what they're like now. One thing that I used to be really keen on, like if you go back in my videos or any of my old Twitch streams, way back when I first started playing on Korea, I just used to fish all day long. Um, I, I don't know why, because it was horrible money back then. Uh, I don't know if it's horrible money now, but that's one of the things I want to look into. But I, ju I used to love fishing. I used to love going out on my little fishing boat, sitting out at sea and just playing the mini game whilst either watching a stream, listening to music or talking to my viewers. It was really, really relaxing. So I'm hoping that with all these mastery changes and everything, fishing is going to be a lot better than it once was. Uh, but I need to look into that a lot more. I'm fishing overnight at the moment. Uh, just to try and level my fishing up because I'm assuming that getting to guru is obviously advisable. That seems to be where a lot of life skills really take off when you get to that level of them. I have noticed as well that when I fished overnight is you can now get orange rarity fish, which are worth like over a million silver or you can get some that are worth like two million silver, which is amazing. Again, they've added new things to try and keep the life skills up. And then I think the last skill, and this is a bit of a meme for me at this point, is I actually want to look into horse training because I can see that they've added some stuff to the mastery and the skill to make it a bit more, uh, a bit more appealing to people. But I still think it's probably awful. But even if it's something that I could just do on the side for a bit of fun, like level up some horses, maybe do it overnight or horse breeding again would be great because I, I miss horse breeding. It was for me, it was weirdly exciting. I know that sounds ridiculous because people are going for their pens and their their tet manos and all their accessories and everything. But now nah, me, I just want to get my tier eights and my tier nines and, you know, run around into the sunset. So that's what I'm going to be working towards in the future. But right now, getting ready for the mass cook for Balanos. Uh, and that's basically where I'm up to at the moment, guys. Uh, so I don't really have anything to add at this point. What I am going to be doing is, dependent on how this video does and what you guys think, this is probably more of the style of video I'm going to adopt for this series. Just because it's, I think it's better to give an actual overview of... Uh, of what I've been doing rather than just nice padding screenshots and random things, you know, like this, this, you can actually see me progressing in the game again, and you can actually see me improving and trying to relearn the game and understand. And hopefully if any of you are thinking of returning to the game as well, or you have returned to the game, hopefully you'll find this useful because the thing that I didn't know what to do when I came back is the game was very overwhelming and I didn't know what was meta and what was worth doing and spending my time on. So I'm very lucky and very fortunate that I have um, my viewers uh, and my guildies and ex-guildies and in-game friends to come and help me out. And if I didn't have that, I honestly don't know what I'd be doing in the game right now because I would have been so confused. I think I'd still be trying to do bartering, but I have no idea what I'm doing. However, I've put bartering on the back burner again for now because it's just there's too there's too much to do in this game. And I absolutely love that there's so much to do in the game. But at the same time, you know, I've just got to kind of chill out and do one thing at a time. Anyway, guys, I've rambled on for a bit now. And let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it beneficial. And until next time, guys, take it easy and peace out.